Hello and welcome to the International Pentagon Challenge. My name is Kai Knight and together we'll be embarking on a very special football manager journey where we'll aim to try and win every major international competition in all five continents, forcing our hand to play with hundreds of different types of players and most importantly hopefully create loads of awesome different types of tactics along the way. Once that's complete, only then are we allowed to set our sights on the biggest of all goals, the FIFA World Cup. How many nations will we have to manage until we work our way to the top? How many dodgy names will we have to pronounce along the way? So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun along the way. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to episode 74 of the International Pentagon Challenge. So, straight into the schedule, last time round we obviously left things off after a... I wouldn't say comfortable, but <laughs> a surprising 4-3 friendly win against our previous side in the form of England. And obviously, uh, I kind of promised at the end of the last episode that this episode would be a CONCACAF World Cup qualifier game if you know things started to get a bit hot and spicy and difficult for us. Now, we're not going to see any matches this episode, uh, but you will in the next episode and I'll show you why. So a spanner in the works was thrown in once I realised I was apparently competing at the Confederations Cup and that group kind of got drawn and it caused us plenty of problems. Um, but in terms of what our next match is going to be, as you can see at the top of the screen, it is actually going to be a CONCACAF World Cup qualification match which suggests that something went wrong somewhere. And we'll take a look at that now. So our first game was a very, very, very good 4-1 win against Costa Rica at home. Roger Iturbe uh, scoring four goals that game. And to be honest, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this lad. Um, you know, he has one game like that where he scores four goals and then he'll just miss God knows how many sitters the next couple of games and it's just infuriating and it's made me want to consider potentially changing system to uh, a narrow 4-2-3-1 that way we sacrifice him uh, play Ruiz up front and then end up playing with an extra center midfielder but I've not quite bit the bullet just yet um, so that was a 4-1 victory one of the goals was a penalty it was the third goal which is why it made sense to give him a chance to get the hat trick from the spot we then had probably one of our more important games um, because it's up against the United States. Bearing in mind that the United States and Canada are probably the two strongest sides in our group in terms of getting the top three spots. And we just about managed to beat the United States. It was a good 1-0 win. Uh, as you can see, a very, very close game. Not really much in the game, but it was Ricardo Zamudio who now plays for Wolfsburg, 31 years old, who grabbed us the goal and it was a wonderful strike from outside of the box as well. Next up was again another World Cup qualifier and as you can probably see on the screen, red dots have begun appearing. Uh, so we played Canada and when we beat them 2-1, now it was a dodgy start and we've had dodgy starts against Canada before. They are very, very good, strong starters in their 4-4-2. But really, overall, we were the better side and I'm glad that we managed to get the win in the end. Marcos Colin, um, I mean, you know, I come all the way to Mexico to manage a team and my best player ends up being called Colin. But yeah. So that to one side, <laughs> he now plays for Spurs, uh, so does one of our wonder kids coming through who uh, funnily enough plays in the same position as Colin and has also been signed by Spurs. So who's the Spurs manager nowadays? It is Antonio Conte. Okay, we know he likes his, his central players somewhat. <laughs> okay, so that to one side, we beat Canada 2-1. And, you know, once you beat Canada 2-1, you beat the Americans 1-0 and you beat Costa Rica 4-1, you think to yourself, well... You know, you take a look at the group. There's only really um, El Salvador. Is it El Salvador? No, Guatemala, who were the team really left to beat in the first kind of group of games. And then we'd have basically won every single game, which would have left us very comfortably on 12 points. But unfortunately, as we can see, Guatemala, who were probably the weakest of all the teams in our group, ended up beating us. And I am still baffled as to how. Now, 
I wish I could explain it. I can't. The match stats say it all. The main reason why they had clear-cut chances at the end of the day was because once we went 2-1 down after they won a penalty somehow in the 80th minute after a complete BS of a equaliser, um, we had to throw everything forward because at the end of the day, this group is probably going to go down to you know the, the final kick of a ball. And uh, yeah, we lost to Guatemala. Not exactly the proudest moment of my managerial career, but we had to put it behind us and uh, focus on other things. And uh, unfortunately, the losing streak continued. A 1-0 loss against Ireland. Um, really, in terms of the performance, it was, again, all Mexico, really. And, you know, those of you who are looking at shots on target and thinking, well, you're shooting a lot from outside the box and whatnot with your three central midfielders, the problem is that really, you know, I play on comprehensive highlights and that really, really hasn't been the case um, the main reason why we just lack so many shots on target is because Iturbe is played through so many times onto goal and, you know, he just completely puts the ball wider over the bar and it just it makes no sense whatsoever to me. Um, and when you play against a team like Ireland, they are eventually going to get chances, especially in Dublin at home. And you're going to concede them with our defence. And that, unfortunately, is what happened to us. It's funny how we managed to beat teams like England and Canada and the United States and then lose to Ireland. We then beat Honduras 1-0 in the friendly. Back to the World Cup qualifiers. Panama cropped up. We disposed of them 3-0. And then this second loss happened. And really, 23 seconds into the game, Jose Rendon, one of our centre-backs, didn't even go to ground and got a yellow card straight away. And to me, it wasn't a bookable offence. Plus, it was 23 seconds into the game. And then, as you can see, in the eighth minute, got sent off. So we basically played the mass majority of this game um, with 10 men. And the free kick that Jose Rendon got his first yellow card from, they converted, which is why Felipe Mora scored in the first minute. So really, it was one of them games. There's not really much we could do about it. Um, all we've got to do is take it on the chin and go again. And it was a half-decent performance, really. Uh, considering the fact that we played with 10 men. And then the FIFA Confederations Cup came along. Now, I wasn't really expecting to be in the FIFA Confederations Cup, otherwise I would have mentioned it in the previous episode. But as we know in Football Manager, these things kind of just crop out of nowhere. You don't get any kind of preemptive warning. Uh, and our group was, in fact, well, whilst we're here, before we take a look at this group, let's see exactly where we, what our World Cup qualification group looks like. It's not that significant because, really, we're not that fussed about qualifying for the World Cup. Um, our main focus is winning the next CONCACAF Gold Cup, but I feel like if we don't qualify for the World Cup, we lose our job. So if we are to live to fight another day and reach that point, we have to qualify for the World Cup. So at the moment, the United States are top of the group on goal difference, um, but you know, considering we want to finish in the top three spots, the fact that there's a three-point gap between ourselves and Costa Rica in fourth has to be seen as positive so that's how things lie there i feel like guatemala have to start dropping points like guatemala somehow miraculously have not only beat us 2-1 they beat the united states 1-0 and then beat panama 3-0 you probably expect to maybe to get a decent enough result against panama but 3-0 is still quite a thumping so credit where it's due to guatemala and claudio albizuris even though i don't think they deserve to win against us um but yeah our uh, fifa confederations cup group had brazil argentina and Egypt B in it. So Egypt B was going to be an interesting one. I'm not sure on what basis we ended up with Egypt B and not the main Egyptian side, um, but that's how basically it materialised. But then when you see Brazil and Argentina in your group, you kind of think, well, that's us gone. You know, you think about certain opposition, you might be able to fluke a win against them, but not against Brazil and Argentina. But believe it or not, we almost did. So it started off with a really comfortable 4-1 win against the Egyptians, which you, again, would expect because it was their B team. And then it looked like we were going to get a win against Argentina. I kid you not. Like, you can look at their match stats. Guys, we matched Argentina. And this is Argentina, who I'm pretty sure a few years ago have won not just one, but two World Cups in a row, if my memory serves me correct. You can see how harsh it is on the left-hand side of the screen as well. We huffed and puffed. And then they equalized in the 85th minute. And then they scored the softest of headers in the 94th minute that got them the win. And... You know, when you consider that their two goals were two of their four shots on target, I think we did pretty well to hold the Argentinians down and be 1-0 up for so long, but it is really tough when you throw it away in the last minute. 
And going into a game against Brazil, it would have been nice to uh, to have guaranteed ourselves at least you know four points going into that tough game, regardless of how other results will have gone. But at the same time, knowing we got a decent result against the Argentinians, I kind of did feel a bit optimistic that we could have maybe just maybe pulled something special off against the Brazilians. And believe it or not, we did. We were 1-0 down for the mass majority of the game. Again, you look at the match stats. Yes, the majority of the clear-cut chances went to the Brazilians, as you'd expect it to, which is kind of different to what happened to us against the Argentinians, where we were by far the better side. Here, it was more of an even game. But the fact that we are capable of matching these teams, if we do qualify for the World Cup, um, at least is positive, and the fact that we are capable of winning these games. Um, it was tough, it wasn't easy, but a 2-1 win against Brazil shows that, you know, tactically what we're doing, we are able to grind out good results. Um, we just need to really try and keep as many of our stronger players fit as possible, because we kind of have a group of players who are really good, and then a group of players who are just bang average. Um, and it feels like we are missing an extra spark up front in place of Iturbe. It's mainly Ruiz who I count on for most of the goals and these centre mids and Colin all obviously join in as well. But if Iturbe honestly just had better composure or whatever the hell is wrong with him, um, we'd score so many more goals. Uh, and that is really going to be it for this episode. It's getting tight in terms of the World Cup qualifiers. I want to make sure the next two episodes, because... It, we're in a bit of a, South, of, of a North Korea situation here where a lot of games have been played off camera for obvious reasons. Um, I want to make sure the next episode is our game against the United States and then the episode after that is our game against Canada to give you guys some games to watch. Um, if we win those two games, really, that will put us in a very commanding position in terms of the World Cup qualifier groups. Uh, it will probably guarantee us qualification, if anything, and we'll probably be able to field weaker, younger sides against Panama and Guate. Mala. But just before we go, I know I mentioned a wonder kid earlier on who also signed for Spurs, and it is this lad here, Marco Antonio Arenas. So, 41 million quid is his value, £87,000 per week, and you can see how good he is for the age of 20. His media description is, to be frank, wonder kid. If I can find it, there it is. I am, for some strange reason, part of his favoured personnel, which is nice to see, and um, he did actually grab a goal for us. On his debut, which says a lot about him, but he does seem to be somewhat injury prone. So we are going to have to keep an eye on that. He scored against the Egyptians after coming on off the bench. But if you enjoy the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.